All right, welcome into another episode of the 2021 MLB Draft Team Preview Specific Series here at Prospects Live. Joining me this week for the NL West, at least for some of it, we'll see if it's for the entire week, we've got Mr. Tyler Jennings. Tyler, famously uh, one of our one of our premier scouts here that uh, resides in the, in the triangle and goes out and sees all the ball that he can. Uh, I figured there's no better way to kick this off than to get Tyler on the stream because Tyler knows everything about uh, the prep class and a whole lot about the college class. And with a team like the Colorado Rockies that we're focusing on here, Tyler would be kind of the best guy to jump in and share his thoughts here. Tyler, I'm going to just kind of throw it over to you right away. The Colorado Rockies, they've been, I mean, they've been a pretty exciting team over the last few drafts. Zach Veen, who had some top five helium, fell into their lap last year. Of course, Michael Toglia in 2019 and Ryan Rollison, who's right on the precipice of, uh, of debuting for Colorado in 2021. I kind of I, I want to just throw it over to you. They're picking in an interesting spot here in the top 10. I think there's going to be some pretty good talent on the board for Colorado available. Where do you see Bill? I, I think his name is Bill Schmidt. He's the new interim GM. Um, and formerly the amateur scouting director. Where do you see Colorado going in this first round? Yeah, so it's a little interesting, uh, like you had mentioned, because they're picking eight, um, and there could be anything that happens within the top ten. Uh, I know last mock we had Sam Bachman at this spot, and that is totally in play, and he could be an arm that could help out the Rockies sooner rather than later. Uh, he's a guy that's touched 101 this year, or even 102 at that point, on some radar guns from uh, the Miami student managers that they posted on Twitter. And he's been sitting more, you know, mid 90s, higher 90s, and he's got a wipeout slider that he has a, a manipulative. Uh, it's a manipulative slider. Um, he's working on a changeup, which the other day he was throwing in a. I want to say it was like a pitching lab or something like that, and it looked really impressive. Um, so he's definitely a guy that I would love. Personally, I'd love to see the Rockies go after here. There's also Brady House you could throw into the mix here. Uh, we've talked about him a couple of times. Pl a double-plus power potential in that frame. He's one of the stronger uh, shortstops in this class, and he's up in that upper echelon with Cole Watts and Jordan Lawler, um, Marcelo Meyer as well. So, like, like you had mentioned, they're in an interesting spot, and I feel like uh, those are probably the top two guys I think that they would target in this draft. Yeah, I think Colorado is in a really just – they're kind of in an interesting predicament. You always want to go with the best player available, but with the Rockies, I think you and I would both agree they're probably on the edge of a three- or four-year rebuild coming around the corner. Uh, having Arenado shipped out, Trevor Story, all signs point to – I hope this isn't unfair to the Colorado fans – all signs point to Trevor Story not returning to Colorado after this year maybe being dealt at the deadline. Of course, there's guys like John Gray. There's guys like um, Kyle Freeland. Um, and of course, there's been interest in Herman Marquez. So they may be tearing it down here sooner rather than later. If that's the case, you probably want to go with the best, best player available. I do think Brady House fits that bill. I do think, of course, the guys that you mentioned, Khalil Watson, Sam Bachman, those guys also fit the bill. Tyler, I want to throw it over to you. If there was one guy, best case scenario, for Coors, if there's one guy that could fall into the lap of the Colorado Rockies, who would that be? Who best fits what they're looking to achieve? That is a very interesting question, actually. Because um, I, I love House in the Rockies system because it fits that profile of they're going into that rebuild. You're looking at he could be the best potential uh, player available on that on their board at that point. And, of course, he fits into that timeline where he does take some years to develop because he's on the prep side. He's got age on his side. Um, it's just a matter of do you think he stays at shortstop long term? Does he move to third base? Where do you protect him to go? The power is definitely going to play in a park like Coors because, um, like I said, double plus power potential in that bat. Um, another guy that I would like to see potentially, maybe if Jackson Job falls into the Rockies' lap, that could be a fun experiment for the Rockies. Um, granted, the last prep arm that they took, which was Riley Pike back in 2015, hasn't worked out in their favor. Um, he's recently retired, so really just depends on what happens on that front. But 
Job's got a fastball that goes up to 99. Wipeout slider with RPMs as high as 3,200. And he's working on a changeup that could be plus in the future. And he's also got a curveball he's recently introduced. Um, so that'd be a very fun profile uh, for the Rockies to tamper with there. Yeah, I, I, I can't. I can't argue with either one of those picks. I think those are two premier players. Uh, either way, Colorado is definitely going to have some some ripe fruit in front of them. For me, I think Khalil Watson would be the dream, and I don't see him falling that far. But you're talking about an explosive athlete with present loft who projects up the middle, and he's going to be able to lift the ball. And obviously we've seen that plays really well at Coors. Uh, that was kind of the M.O. a little bit on Trevor Story when they went after him. Some defensive questions with Trevor Story when they took him in the second round. But everyone loved the bat speed. Everyone loved the uh, potential impact in the middle of the lineup. And I think that's what you're looking at here with Khalil Watson. Granted, uh, it's a much higher profile. It's a first-round bat. Uh, so that's something to look for. But listen, if, if Watson is gone, if House is gone, if Meyer, Lawler, if they're gone, um, for me – I think Sam Bachman makes the most sense. Um, the Rockies haven't gone after a prototypical sinker baller uh, at the top of most drafts when they've had that opportunity. And I'd like to see them kind of go after that here. Obviously, there's some durability concerns. There's the concerns of throwing the change up. But when you look at Sam Bachman, for me, he just looks like an arm that is built for Coors Field. So, uh, you know, if you're looking to build and, and, and develop a rotation for the future, Sam Bachman has ace, maybe a uh, high to low to uh, potential uh, to kind of be the catalyst for that organization. But hey, that's that's all we have for the Colorado Rockies. I think they're going to be in an interesting in, uh, situation, just kind of depending on who's available to them, who falls. Tyler, I want to thank you again for joining me on this uh, Colorado Rockies preview, and we will jump into more of the NL West this week. <laughs> 